Good morning, Miriam. You wanted to know how to do this. The empty jars, the lids, the canners with three quarts of water, two tablespoons of vinegar so your jars don't get icky. This right here is a can of meat that sat outside last night in the cold. Taped with its lid down so no one can get to it. On top of my, well, on a raised spot. So there begins this. Oh, most critical. You hear that? That's what I need a lot of. I shot it once, knocked it down, waited five minutes, it, it stood up again, I shot it again, dropped it again. So we went to go get it and they got up and ran away and we tracked it for an hour and never found it. So, yeah, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. What's that? It's a video. It's a video. Oh, well, I hit it in the front quarter. I mean, I don't know exactly where it was about four after five, so it was getting a little dim, but I nailed it good. I mean, I dropped it. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But someone else shot when we were tracking it, so maybe it got up and ran and someone else. Okay, Miriam. Now, into each one of these jars goes a piece of bacon. Where is that? Um, t rounded teaspoon of garlic. And it will be a teaspoon of canning salt. Full, not like what I was showing you there. For the step one, I put that in all the jars first, so I don't forget it. The best. This is how you put bacon in a jar. Now cut it out. My sister said she wanted to see how this is done. Carefully like, drop I wanna, bacon into the jar. Well, I, I try to do a videotape and so I have to look off the oh, see what bacon is. Roll up a little piece of raw bacon and eat it. Tastes very good. That's disgusting. It's good for you too. It's so unbelievably disgusting. I can't believe you said that. Oh. Okay, step one. Red R E C. Oh, yep, no, it does. Oops. It's okay. Red. Oops. Honey. He's such a good recorder. Don't make comments. <sighs> Stay away from my phone. Hello, this is Julia Childs. <laughs> I'm carefully putting a little bit of garlic and now salt in this jar. <coughs> it's important to put a precise amount of salt in each jar. Notice my technique. This is me not commenting. Oh, I'm almost done. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but you'll see. You don't know what I'm doing next. <laughs> Just don't get my clothes at all, because I really am not... Dress for TV. Oh, bacon. We need to come on this side. Is she gonna have audio? Well, it depends if I need to eat edited or not with Dad's wise remarks. No, I think those are better with it. Oh, so you put bacon in those. Mm. Well, you knew that. No, I didn't. You seriously didn't recognize it? Well, I knew there was bacon in it. I saw it when I was eating it, but I just didn't know what <coughs> you put it in. Oh, yeah. Like, when you're cooking it. Oh, right. Are we eating it later? Are we going to eat it? Uh, yum, Ow. Miriam, I try to save the little pieces for, um... I'm going to try to make some coffee No, don't do that. We'll just turn it off. Let's turn no, it's okay. It's okay. Because you're going to wiggle and it's a shaky film and stuff. That's okay. You can just turn it off. No, I can do this. Okay. Sure. Multitasking is never a good idea when you're... Trust me. I got this. Still showing it. Okay. Okay. Still the good Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Now I gotta get the copy. So, Miriam, I don't like to overfill the jars because there's nothing so heartbreaking as smelling a jar as you cook it that you know bursts and it's giving its wonderful flavor to all the atmosphere. Because that's a lot of meat to waste. I mean, if I'm able, we, I try to get it out or save it afterwards and eat it right away or serve the next meal of the day the venison roast unexpectedly, but it's not recommended because of... Usually when the jar cracks, it will just go boom and you'll have a clear line around the bottom. And... So are we going to have venison this Sunday? Yes, we'll have venison. Yay! Yeah. Finally, no more roast beef. But not saying it's bad, I'm just saying... Uh, no, it's it's, a lot it was a treat, wasn't it? For a month, it was different. Yeah, it's good. Not as good as venison. Yeah. Nicole will enjoy me all again. Okay. You can turn it off, honey. No, no, that's good. But I gotta figure out a way to get the milk. <laughs> I don't want you to. Because I'm not dressed for camera, and I don't want you to accidentally get me pieces of your mother's disable. Watching it and getting it the milk. And you're not, you're not able to see it go in the jar. It's okay, I've done enough. You can turn it off, honey. Okay, so this chair right here that looks a little different was in the refrigerator overnight. Well, let's see, two nights now. Because this is a deer from Justin. And I had two canners, so that was 14, plus I had these four and that half left over. And I knew we were going to cut up another deer the next day, so I waited to get a full canner's worth at a time. And now, I've outsmarted myself because as you see here, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I can do 14 at a time and I have meat to go yet. So, I still have to do two full, another, uh, this canning session and another because of, uh, I should have just done the extra yesterday. I don't like to run a not full canner. That's when your jars have more chance of bouncing. I have ways I can kind of um, take up the slack, but that's not perfect. So I have more chances. Sometimes what I'll do, if I know we're going to get another deer, and I expect we will have been offered if once we get the time to cut it up, is I put the meat already in the jar like this, uncooked, everything the way I want it, in the freezer, and <clears throat> wait until we get another deer cut up, and then thaw this and can it. Not my favorite. There's always more risk of losing uh, a jar. But you shouldn't if you pack it properly. If it's going to break in the freezer, it's going to break in the canner anyway. So, yep. Don't use old jars. Don't use anything but canning jars. See? Ball. Can, uh, that pick up there. B-A-L-L. -L. Or Kerr. I have some Kerr in here too. Don't use mayonnaise jars. The old mom's tricks of old. They recommend not doing that. They're not meant for this process. They can't take the wear and tear of this high pressure, beat up, <laughs> hardcore cooking. So, there you go, Miriam. Okay, Miriam. Like, for instance, see this jar with the garlic on the edge of it? Every jar gets wiped and cleaned in case that I did drip anything on the edges to um, inhibit the seal at all. If you find any jars that have an imperfection in the rim here that like maybe not smooth, damaged over time, usage, repeated usage, <coughs> excuse me, um, that would be well, I'm supposed to check before I fill them, but if I screw up and don't do that and find them, I uh, take everything out of the jar and redo because that's going to be a wasted jar. So, all right. Next, I put the lids on and I put them on very snugly and put them in the jar or the canner. Okay, headspace. And you see, this is my jar. It does have air pockets in it. <coughs> 
not not what you would like, but you know, unless you cut the dice the meat into small pieces, you will have air pockets when it's you know a cold pack, which is what this is. Here's the headspace, and then you see there's a little air pockets in there. Again, not my favorite thing to see, but that is totally acceptable. I don't know if you can see this, Maria. Where's Uh, I don't know, hi. The steam is starting to come out of here. Padre. And it's got to come oh, out for 7 to 10 over. minutes, and I'll put the timer on. So it's venting it in the canner. That one's doing it, and this one's not. So I always have different times. I'll put 7 minutes on my timer, and yeah. good to go. Timer just went off. And now, put the weight on. And you see that dial go up. I keep it between 11 pounds and 15 for the next 90 minutes. And then I'll turn everything off and let the dial go back to zero before I take that weight off and remove the cover. Now it's the trick of keeping the flame, which is, I'm having issues right now with my burner. Um, <sighs> That's totally messed up. I'm going to have to get a new burner. You can see that. Very foul flame. As opposed to that one back there that's blue flame. Burning dirty. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there we go. Just keeping the, the gauge. I have to monkey with this thing. It would usually be right, right around here for the 90 minutes that it's processing. Starting over. There you go. It's up to 11 pounds, see that? The pressure is I have to keep it there. Between 11 and 15 pounds, if not, especially to let it drop below 11 is the most critical. You're supposed to start the timing of 90 minutes all the way over if for some reason it drops below. I never have, but anyway, that's the directions. And this one is venting, uh, yet it has to vent. I can't really see that, the steam. I don't know how to show that to you. Anyway, um, for the next eight minutes. I don't even put this yet. Yeah, this I can see it though. And this vent cover lock is by the time that this is sufficiently vented, that will have popped up like this one is. See that safety lock? It's keeping the pressure. Not safety lock. That's the vent cover lock. This is a safety lock right there. Um, keeping the pressure in the canner. So that it can, in fact, build. This one's still uh, building up to that, where it has to vent all the extra. I think it's oxygen. It has to be vented out of the uh, can before it can get the pressure, because steam is so much hotter than your boiling 212 water pressure. This gets a little bit hotter, depending on what pressure you keep on this valve. It will tell you what heat is in the can. Whatever. I just follow directions. I don't always read about it because when I do read about it, I get a little bit of knowledge and I forget it. All right. So there we're at this stage here. This is still got a vent for two more minutes for the clock, and I'll put the weight on, and it will build up to this one. The trick is maintaining that 11 pounds pressure. It's already going up to 12. I'm going to lower the heat here. Where's my hand? Here we go to try to maintain it at 11. <clears throat> Dance around that point for the next 90 minutes. Okay, this one has done its time and the flame is off. Everything's on zero and it has to, the dial has to go down to zero and I can take that off, the weight off and remove the lid and we'll see what's there. And then this one has 15 minutes yet to go. This back one. So I'm um, Struggling to keep it between 11 and 15. It really wants to fight me today. But that's alright. See that? Fresh out of the canner. They had to uh, cool down for about 20 minutes for the dial to go back down to zero pressure. And uh, they will bubble like this. Continue to cook inside that jar. Or something for usually a couple hours. Crazy, isn't it? One more batch to run. 
Okay, Miriam, start to finish. This is our final product here. 27 on the counter, one in the refrigerator that I saw the seal for whatever reason didn't, didn't, uh, it failed. So that'll be our dinner for tomorrow. I can't put that on the shelf. Took advantage of the heat in the kitchen to make some dinner rolls to go with dinner. And we'll put some away for a turkey day. And we have five more quarts going now. I have to get that up to, to pressure. And that'll be it for this weekend. And then, uh, Lord willing, Monday, Paul cuts up the hate point that Cara got. And we'll enjoy that. So we are quickly getting a full larder. We like to get 52 quarts. So we have a... a Unless we open extra, we have um, one for each Sunday of the year. As you knew, we ran out a month ago, and we are filling our larder now. So, yay!